In the world of British engineering, Foden was a name that once stood for power, pride, and innovation. Founded in 1856, the company carved its legacy through steam wagons and diesel lorries, icons of grit and endurance. But in the 1940s, Foden took a risk, a bold, ambitious risk. They weren't content with following the diesel crowd, they wanted to lead it. And so they developed their own two-stroke diesel engine. It was lighter, it was faster, it had the potential to change the game. But what started as a triumph of engineering slowly unraveled into a technical tragedy. Overheating, inefficiency, and rejection by drivers and markets alike. What sounded like a brilliant engine turned out to be nothing more than just a pipe dream. This is the story of how a bold innovation was brought down by its own brilliance. The roots of this story stretch back to the 1930s. At the time, Foden relied heavily on Gardner engines, specifically the widely respected 6LW model. But demand was growing, and Gardner couldn't supply fast enough. Foden needed independence. William Foden, grandson of company founder Edwin Foden, saw this as an opportunity to go beyond supply chain issues. Why just replace the engine when you could outperform it? They began by experimenting with a single-cylinder Russell and Newbury engine, mimicking the Gardner 6LW specs, a 4.25-inch bore and a 6-inch stroke. Initially, they leaned towards a conventional 4-stroke, but Foden engineers quickly pivoted to something bolder, a 2-stroke diesel. Why? Well, because two strokes offered a higher power-to-weight ratio, they could squeeze more performance from a smaller block. The team adopted a uniflow scavenging design, forcing intake air in one direction and exhaust out the other, a method borrowed from marine engines. It was elegant, it was promising, but it was also problematic. The prototype ran hot, fuel efficiency was a concern, it burned about 25% more diesel than the Gardner, and piston growth under heat caused frequent mechanical failures. Still, Foden pressed on. They believed they could iron out all the issues. What they were building wasn't just an engine, it was an identity. Then came the war. In 1939, the outbreak of World War II forced Foden to halt their ambitious two-stroke engine project. With the nation embroiled in conflict, every industry pivoted towards supporting the war effort, and Foden was no exception. Their production lines, previously dedicated to trucks and buses, transformed overnight to build military vehicles and tanks. Over the next several years, Foden produced more than 1,700 military vehicles and nearly 800 tanks, contributing significantly to Britain's wartime resilience. Yet, despite this dramatic shift in focus, the dream of revolutionising diesel technology was never fully extinguished. By 1941, as the immediate pressures of war began to ease slightly, engineers at Foden reignited their interest in the dormant two-stroke project. Realizing the inherent limitations of their initial design, the company sought to enhance their concept by integrating new technological advancements. This led Foden into a pivotal collaboration with Armstrong Whitworth Securities, who held the rights to the innovative Caden AC principle. This revolutionary scavenging technique harnessed pressure waves to significantly improve airflow and combustion efficiency within the engine. It was a crucial breakthrough, addressing some of the early efficiency and cooling concerns that had plagued Foden's initial attempts. By 1948, the reimagined two-stroke diesel engine emerged, the FD6. This compact, supercharged 4.1-litre engine produced an impressive 126 horsepower, quickly catching attention within commercial circles. Foden enthusiastically incorporated the FD6 into their FE and FG lorry models as well as their PVR and PVS bus chassis. The engine stood out for its responsiveness and rapid acceleration, praised especially by drivers who valued its ability to quickly and smoothly navigate city streets. For a brief moment, it seemed the turmoil of war had forged a stronger, more refined version. However, beneath the initial excitement, unresolved challenges lingered. Although promising in short-term use in controlled environments, the FD's deeper issues, overheating and mechanical reliability, remained stubbornly unsolved. Foden had created an engine that appeared triumphant, but beneath the polished exterior, critical flaws awaited discovery, flaws that would soon overshadow every technical achievement. And as these weaknesses surfaced, they would lead directly into the engine's most troubling chapter yet. On paper, the FD6 was undeniably impressive, light, powerful, and forward-thinking. At just 530 kilograms, it weighs significantly less than the Gardner's 6 LX engine, which tipped the scales at nearly double that figure. While Gardner's renowned four-stroke offered about 150 horsepower from a robust 10.45-litre displacement, the FD6 punched well above its weight class, capable of delivering between 175 and even 225 horsepower in some high-performance variants. 
In short-haul and city-driving scenarios, this made the Foden two-stroke an agile and dynamic choice. But real-world conditions soon revealed the engine's fundamental limitations. On the open road, particularly under challenging conditions like steep inclines or sustained high speeds, the FD6 faltered. The scorching Australian outback provided perhaps the harshest proving ground, brutally exposing the engine's Achilles heel, cooling. Long ascents and blistering heat overwhelmed the cooling system, resulting in frequent overheating. Cylinder heads warped and cracked. Maintenance intervals shrank dramatically, and reliability became a serious concern for fleet operators. Compounding these woes, drivers began voicing frustrations about torque, or rather the noticeable lack of it at lower RPM ranges. Below 1,500 RPM, the FD6 struggles significantly, lacking the crucial low-end grunt that truck drivers depend on when hauling heavy cargo. This wasn't merely an inconvenience, it became a fundamental flaw undermining confidence in the engine's sustainability for long-distance commercial transport. In 1962, Foden tried addressing these issues by unveiling their Dynamic series, including the FD4 and the upgraded FD6 Mark VI, boasting larger cylinder bores and roughly 17% more power. But even these refinements weren't enough to fully resolve underlying reliability problems. The Dynamic series pushed performance further, but only deepened existing mechanical vulnerabilities. Ultimately, Foden's engineers had built an engine that excelled at short bursts of power but lacked the durability and stamina needed for the demands of heavy-duty commercial trucking. It was spectacular in sprints, but frustratingly fragile under pressure. The balance of technical promise and practical disappointment soon shaped how markets around the world would perceive and ultimately reject the ambitious two-stroke engine. The world didn't reject the Foden two-stroke engine uniformly. Regional experiences were strikingly diverse. In Britain, the engine achieved moderate success, particularly in single-decker buses such as the popular PVR chassis. Here, its high revving capabilities and quick throttle response made sense for urban transit. Drivers appreciated the smooth power delivery, unique engine note, and ease of acceleration through congested city streets. Far away in New Zealand, the engine carved out a devoted niche following. Enthusiasts admired its simplicity, ease of maintenance, and above all, the peculiar musical rhythm of its exhaust note. To some Kiwi drivers, it became affectionately known as a singer sewing machine on steroids, beloved precisely because it was unusual a quirky relic that stood apart from conventional four-stroke alternatives. Yet, the situation in Australia painted a starkly contrasting picture. There, the Foden FD6 was put through the grueling test of vast distances, steep inclines, and extreme heat. Under these harsh conditions, the engine consistently underperformed, suffering from chronic overheating, cylinder head cracking, and expensive maintenance cycles. It simply couldn't cope with Australia's demanding trucking landscape. At the same time, Detroit Diesel's rival two-stroke engines were surging ahead globally. Detroit's screamers were loud and brash but had something critical that the Foden lacked. Reliability, durability, and extensive dealer support networks. Caught awkwardly in between, Foden's two-stroke found itself stranded. Too delicate for Australia's rugged terrain, too niche for Europe's broader trucking market, and increasingly overshadowed by its Detroit competition. Its once bright promise started to fade, slowly slipping towards obscurity but the slow fade would soon turn into a decisive collapse, marking the beginning of the end for Foden's ambitious diesel dream. Through the 1970s, Foden's once-promising two-stroke engines quickly slipped from prominence. Their robust performance in short-haul applications wasn't enough to overcome persistent reliability issues, especially under prolonged strain. Gradually, these engines found a secondary life, fitted into marine vessels, generators, and industrial equipment. In these controlled environments, their performance demands were predictable, and maintenance schedules could be more reliably managed. But on highways, their reputation had already been critically damaged. Fleet operators had grown wary of downtime and costly repairs, and truck adoption dwindled steadily. In 1977, after nearly three decades of ambitious yet troubled production, the FD engine series finally ceased manufacture altogether. The decline mirrored broader troubles of Foden itself. By the end of the decade, the proud British Marquis was financially strained, unable to keep pace with rivals who adapted faster to changing technology and shifting market demands. In 1980, an era definitively ended when American trucking giant Packard acquired Foden. Under Packard's management, Foden shifted gears, abandoning their proprietary engines entirely in favor of proven units from Cummins and Caterpillar. With that shift, the once-bold dream of a revolutionary two-stroke diesel faded permanently into the past. 